Hello, welcome back to part two for paper two, the specimen paper that's been published by Cambridge. We're going to be looking at the um, questions, second part, questions from seven onwards. So we're going to start with question seven, and here we have a trace table. Complete the trace table using the data given in the array. We've got an array here with four names in it, Jamal, Amir, Eve, and Tara. Okay, and we're going to use this um, flowchart to find out how we populate this. We've got seven columns, okay, uh, one mark for the flag column being correct, one mark for the count column being correct, one mark for the temp column being correct, and then two marks making sure that names appear um, in each of these columns, okay, the correct names are in each of these columns. Okay, so let's start. Flag has been assigned the value zero, count has been assigned the value one, okay. Is name count, okay, the first one, is name count bigger than, greater than, name count plus one. So basically it's saying, is Jamal bigger than Amir? Well, if we're basing it on number of letters, yes it is, but also if we're basing it on the first letter, okay, um, then it would be as well. So let's have a little look at this. So yes it is, so we go down here, temp has been assigned the value name count. Okay, so Jamal goes in there. Name count, um, gets assigned name count plus one. Okay, so let's pop the Amir in there. Name count plus one, sorry, temp, yeah, which is Jamal, gets put into name count plus one. So Jamal goes into here. Okay, and then we carry on down. Flag um, is being assigned the value one. Okay, um, even Tara stay the same because they've not been touched, so we leave those alone. And then count is greater than count plus one, so I'm going to put a two in there. Is count, um, does count equal four? Well, no, it doesn't. Okay, so we go back up here. Is count, so we go to the next pairing, these two here, name two and name three. Is count greater than count plus one? So is Jamal greater than Eve? Well, again, J is bigger than is um, is higher up the alphabet than E. So, let's um, have a little look at this. Leave Amir alone, um, and Eve and Jamal are going to get swapped. The temp value again is in name count. Okay, so Jamal goes in there, and Tamara goes in here. And I've rushed ahead of myself a little bit. Flag has been assigned a value one. Yeah, and count count plus one. Okay, so we're going back again. So we're going to compare now the last two. I think this is going to be some kind of bubble sorting. Jamal and Tara. Is name count, Jamal, yeah, greater than count plus one? Well, J, although the, the letters are, there's, there's more letters, um, Tara begins with the letter T. So it should all stay the same. Yeah, so we're going to go down to no. So we'll leave all those. Count um, has been assigned count plus one. So four goes in there. Um, yeah, and one stays the same in there. So is count now, yeah, is count now equaling four? Yes it is. Okay, so yes it is. Flag then gets assigned the value zero and that goes back to the top. Okay, flag and zero. I left the names the same because nothing's changed in terms of that so that we are dropping down every time. As I said before, see, this is quite a complicated one. So here we go again, we're, we're now here, count sign one, so we're basically repeating this. Is name count greater than name count plus one? Well, it should all be the same, so A, E, J, T, J. So we, shouldn't, we should be avoiding this now because all these have been put in some kind of order, so we should be just coming straight down here. I click on that, yeah, and we go round and back and round and back and round and back and round and back until finally it equals four okay the flag once it equals four you can see there it does uh, we say yes but the flag should equal um, and if this if the flag e and if the flag equals zero then we're going to stop and drop out of that so that would be the results for that table it's basically a bubble sort we're comparing these two these two and these two and we're swapping the order around okay so I've put this in here. Describe the algorithm represented by the flowchart and what it's doing. It's a bubble sort. It's sorting the names into ascending order into A to Z order, the lowest to the highest alphabetical order. Okay, so that's how you would answer question seven. Yeah, seven marks for that. 
So that's rather a lot. Okay, I've put the information in straight into here. A programmer has written an algorithm to check the prices are less than $10. These values are used to test the data. 10.00, 9.99, and 10. State why each value was chosen by test data. 10. I put boundary data in here. I could use abnormal data. The price should be rejected. Yeah. Why? Because the price has got to be less than 10. We've used boundary data, 10, or abnormal data because it's over, it's past the boundary. It's over what we can use. So the value would be rejected. 9.9, .9, again, would be, could, it could be argued it's boundary data, normal data, extreme data, because the price should be accepted, but it's the, like the last amount, the last price that could be accepted within the normal range that we've been given. And then we've got the word 10, which would be abnormal data, because it should rec re shouldn't recognize it because it's the wrong type, it's the wrong value type. Okay, we're looking for numbers in this, not um, not strings. So that would get you three marks. Boundary, boundary, and abnormal data would get you three marks. Or boundary, or abnormal, extreme, and abnormal, or abnormal, normal, and, no and abnormal. Any of those would get you the three marks. Okay. Right, explain why a program might need to store data in a file. Well, any three of these, okay? Data is not lost when the computer is switched off. Okay, so we think about it like that. Okay, so, so if you save a Python file, .py, onto your computer, um, then you can open it again when you turn your computer off. Yeah, data is stored permanently. Data can be used by more than one program or reused when a program is run again. Data can be backed up or archived and data can be transported from one place um, one place, one system to another. You can email the program to other people. Okay, that's a little bit confusing because explain why a program might need to store data in a file. You might be thinking, hang on, a, f a file such as an array and storing data in an array, no, it doesn't mean that. The mark scheme, the, the exam would say array in that case. This is just saying a file. So we move on. Um, a function is declared using pseudocode function, convert to centimeters, inches, um, real number, uh, returns a real value, returns inches times 2.4, okay, end the function. One box which accurately describes the use of the variable inches, yeah, it is a parameter, okay, it's what we're going to type in, yeah, what's, what's going to be used, parameters, it's set to real, that's the parameter, okay, and then it will get converted using this little thing here, using the times 2.4. So it would be a parameter. We have a database with films inside it. 2008 movies is used to keep a record of movie details. Okay, it's got a catalog number, title, genre, genre two, Blu-ray, DVD, and whether it's streamed or not. State the number of records in the database. We basically count all the rows. Okay, not this top row, but all the rows, and there are 20 of them. Give the name of a field that would be used for a primary key. Well, it would be this first one because that's a unique identifier. All these are different. All these are different. State the reason because it is a unique identifier. Right, complete the table to identify the most appropriate data type for each field based on the data shown in the database table. Okay, so cat number. Well, because it's a mixture of numbers and letters, it would have to be a text file. Okay, same with the title, a text file. Same with the genre. Um, there's different, all different genres, fantasy, drama, comedy, adventure. So again, it will be a text file. But the streaming is either yes or no. So, okay, you could use it as a text file, but generally speaking, it would be Boolean. You would pick up marks, two marks there, if you put text in each one of these. Okay, so that's quite nice. Okay, but yeah, generally speaking, the Blu-ray, the DVD, and the streaming are all going to be Boolean um, data types. Okay, and then we've got a little bit of SQL, very, very simple SQL. Um, complete the structured query language SQL to return the, cat the category number, yeah, and the title for all comedy movies. So, um, we're going to select cat number and title. So, cat number and the title, we're going to select those two things, yeah, from this table, yeah, from this table, where the genre equals, and it's asking for comedy movies, so where the genre equals comedy. Okay, we put the comedy, we put these, these things that are in each cell, we put this, these um, entities um, in quote marks, okay, to show that they are um, actual entities that live 
inside the table. Now, the variables x, y, and z are used to store data in a program. x stores a string, y stores a position in the string, and z stores a number of characters in the string. Right, pseudocode, uh, this sounds very difficult, it sounds, this sounds rather complicated, but basically write pseudocode statements to declare the variables x, y, and z. We're going to declare x as a string, that's all it means. Declare y as an integer, because it's a number, and we're talking number of characters in the string, so z would be declared as an integer as well. Declare z as, so learn, do a little bit of vision on declaring in terms of pseudocode. And then part b, the function length x finds the length of a string x okay the function substring x y z finds a substring of x starting at position y and z characters long the first character is is the first character in x is in position one write pseudocode statements to store the string programming is fun okay in x so i've done that here look x has been assigned the value with an arrow programming is fun Find the length of the string and output it. So output length, yeah, using this function, length of x. Extract the word fun from the string and output it. So y value has been assigned the value of 16, because that's where 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We're including spaces, yeah, um, and z. If we don't go here, z is a character long, so it's three characters long. So from the position y, we're going to go one, two, three. So output the substring of length x from position y, um, three characters long, that would give us the word fun. So that's how you would do that. Okay, assigning values to each of the three things. And then we go into the scenario question, which I have done in another video. I'll put the link in for scenario at the end. Thank you very much. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.